out here in Baja, Mexico. First couple days was primarily the different hospital scenes. And we're sort of recreating what happened, both between the accidents and the hospital experiences. Gabriel pretty much spoke to our location scout and he said, okay, I know the people in charge of that facility, which it was a school of medicine from the state university. We were shooting at a hospital on location. It was a medical school, so we had access to all of these med students and doctors. So the first day on set at the hospital, doing a scout with some of the crew and how we're going to tackle these really complicated right there, scenes with lots of different actors and different moving pieces. Because in the beginning here, it's kind of a setup. We were redressing. We had one hallway that had to be transformed to a 1980s Paris, France hospital. I'm a planner, so I was going through the shot list on the scout day and just making sure everything was lined up. Traditionally in filmmaking, you try to put all of your like location or like casted scenes together. We were in a hospital for, I think, four days filming. We had some fairly complicated rigs on gurneys for these hospital scenes. I mean, the cool thing is that these are real people's stories, right? It's not just a narrative. So on the first day, we're capturing Howard's story from the point where he first enters the Paris hospital to the point where he goes into the room and takes his last breath. We're filming five different storylines. They're from different eras and different periods, and sometimes you have to get era-specific. We went through all the references that were provided to us by our director, by our producers. We compiled our own research. What 70s look like, depending on the location in the US, in Texas, in Paris, they all looked very different. Something as simple as changing the color of the flowers or changing the bed sheet. My name is Doug Lito, and I played the role of Howard. It was really helpful because I got to see the uh, documentary interview for Howard, where he explained his whole story. It was uh, really easy for me to get in character and understand what he was going through, both in his life and then in his afterlife. Even though it was challenging, it was easier having a great acting partner with Coco Marshall, who's an amazing actress and pretty much had to spend the whole movie crying. Coco, who played Beverly, Howard's wife at the time, she brought so much emotion to Beverly. I mean, we really felt that we were there with Howard and Beverly in, in that room. Howard's story is amazing. How many people have literally died, gone to hell, been saved, taken to heaven, had all their questions answered, and been told, no, you can't stay. Your mission isn't done. I'm sending you back. So the next day in the hospital, the first thing we captured was Howard's waking up and seeing his wife Beverly in the hospital room. Steve Gray was an amazing director and really always would take the time to explain exactly what he's looking for and what emotions he's looking that, for. You're not making any sense, Howard. You're not making any sense. Yeah. 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 No, that's totally fine. Okay. Talking about, you know, this experience that he had, and she doesn't believe him. This happened when he's 38. He's in his 60s now. To have that experience and then come back to Earth with that knowledge, it must have been such a challenge for him. He's seen what's waiting. And I think that trying to explain his story is, is probably the most difficult thing he's had to do because people don't even believe him. Then we made some alterations to the room to transform it into this otherworldly, out-of-body experience. Watch my wife watch me die and to see my own body on the bed to react to all these situations was a real challenge as an actor. One of the biggest challenges was we had so many shots to get for each day and the only way we could do it, we broke out into two production teams and I was with the first unit with Austin. We, we see both production teams happening at the same time and I'm, I'm seeing it back to back on the iPad. Next. The second unit thing was like really fun because Steve had done a lot of that already. He had communicated with these actors in casting. He had done so much of the groundwork that really the job did become more technical and Steve did just an incalculable amount of work to make sure my job would be easier. You guys are amazing. This project encouraged me to take it seriously and, and work hard and, and I think it like helped me elevate my abilities and hopefully like in turn helped elevate the film as well. Some of the cast are actually doctors or nurses themselves. All of the action felt so real because they were actual doctors doctors that have done these surgeries. We can direct, you know, how we want things to look, but they can keep things pretty grounded. For one of the surgeries, the doctor felt like the tissue didn't look real enough, so they were on the hunt to find something that felt a little more real. As someone who has never had their appendix removed, I have no idea how it looks like. He was telling me, you know, 
it, it's really a small piece, but it's kind of connecting to your larger intestine. But we are trying to simulate the, <laughs> the appendix. Yeah, nice. <laughs> With chicken. With chicken. It was chicken meat, and to try and make that look real. We had a team of doctors who were extras who would say, you know, this is what would usually happen. The surgeon was actually looking at it and like, you know what? So you're getting someone who has definitely seen human parts before telling you this pork or this chicken is exactly what human body looks like. We are faking all the organs here with chicken breast. <laughs> right now, if it's if, if we're gonna like be like at the beginning of the surgery and action. I have never been a part of something this deep, dealing with very real and drastic scenarios. The hardest pieces was functional hospital stuff, monitors. We were happy with the results that we got in a very short amount of time. Everybody's like pitching in, everybody's like putting whatever they have to make it work. Okay, let's pull back from there. Really nice, guys, really nice. If you were going to do a laboratory experiment, this is the perfect experiment. She underwent an unusual operation called cardiac standstill. Pam Reynolds' uh, surgery tops them all. It was a huge obstacle. Medical equipment and supplies to find everything provided to be more of a challenge than we thought. We're not doctors, you know. We don't know what these pieces mean. There's tools that are extremely difficult to find. We went through these little moments of, we're not gonna have it in time, you know, what do we do? But we were fortunate enough to have a, a great team that was able to find that solution. Any burner team, they were able to somehow get for the surgery. So we had like a blood transfusion tool. And there was one called the heart-lung bypass that we had no idea what it was and it basically just keeps you alive during surgery. We even FaceTimed Dr. Carl Green, who was present during Pam's surgery. For the procedure, so while, be, while she's... Did you get a chance to see yourself? <laughs> Moving this table into place. Making sure we were totally accurate. You're gonna be pushing this tray in, into place. You can have the glasses on, but we'll have them flipped up. This is probably one of the most complicated shots in the film, coordinating so many different people, and the action had to be perfectly landed as the camera was moving through the scene. We got it in two takes. The hope is that we can see your face fully. This is actually one of my favorite shots in the film, and it was planned we just grabbed it in the moment I have a little bit of like head movement as you're talking to her so. give me details that she just shouldn't know you, you doing okay kind of start a little slow I, I became spooked they're gonna rig the lights and we'll put the camera on do this and they rig these lights do these effects on them and it looks like you're passing under countless fluorescent banks down the hallway it's just the solutions to problems that we didn't even know were possible We could also like, like I don't know that we want to see bulb. We are at the hospital in Rosarito, and we are here shooting Don Piper's scene. Hair and makeup and the wardrobe was it was just spot on all throughout, all for all the cast. This is the same team that does Fear the Walking Dead, and we had to make Don look like you know he had he's in the recovery. We're also setting him up for the operation just after the crash. We called up Don Piper. Don's taking a look and seeing, like, is this accurate? Is this picture accurate? Said he was, like, looking at himself. Yes, sir. My room was under your name at the hotel. <laughs> Nick did such a good job of portraying Don and all the anguish that he was experiencing. He had to be put in these uncomfortable positions, you know, with all this stuff around him. But, you know, that's really what Don had gone through. Hey, Don. In 1985. The first thing that he said was that I looked a lot like Ava when she was younger. So that's kind of a good start to it all to know you know that we're at least portraying these uh these real people in a good way and then let me show you your wife Can I show producer you your actually wife? flipped the camera around so that don could see my view of the hospital room and he said it was almost a little too accurate so i think that means we did a good job being in the art department and being in that creative side how can you make this look real and how can you make your audience say wow this is really happening and um i realized yeah. As far as you know, Don should be responding, but he's not. And Kate so brought so much to the character to make uh, Eva's character just, you know, come to life and make us feel like we were actually there. And these moments are so difficult for her to kind of walk through alone. After the accident, she kind of has to hold herself together and hold the family together. And Don is kind of very unresponsive and very depressed, and she has to take up a role as keep him going and keep everybody going. And I would go in, and he would just lay there. He wouldn't talk to me. Let's see if that, if that makes a difference. <laughs> She's such a, a force and a tough lady and listened to the stories that Ava had to tell. I got little snippets of 
the documentary and her story. I thought, you're alive. You know, you're alive, you're back with us. Don't you love us enough to be glad to be back with us? Breathing, Nick. And then I'd tell him goodnight and I'd leave. <laughs> First of all, you're trying to get his attention. You know, because we had a cut of the film already, we're reenacting scenes that, you know, are overlapping with things that the actual person's saying, and we're going to overlay it with uh, what Eva's actually saying during the scene. Uh, to me, that was harder to deal with. The depression was harder to deal with than the physical injuries, which we'll were massive. Anger. We'll make it like a, a shorter snap. Take three. Why, Why aren't you glad that you're back with us? It, it, it would just, it just tumbled out. The luminance has to be greater than that. Or it's in another one of my favorite shots it. in the film, where we want to see Eva's face reflection inside the room. Let's just try w with what she's wearing. Stop right there. Can we mark that off? And then we did some improv with walking. So we had a nurse go in and, and uh, pretend she's stocking some shelves, and her body created this perfect area for Eva's face to appear. And the last thing we filmed at this Mexico hospital was Don's operation. The special effects department had to go really heavy on the blood. After hours, he had been brought to the hospital, and so we want to kind of show the extent of the injuries without getting too graphic. The next day was when I realized I was in the recovery room. Okay, hands busy. Look up to his head. Yeah, he says, I just want to go home. Just, and, then you're, and then you're going in, okay? But I want to put it next to his ear so he can hear you. Later I understood that he meant his heavenly home. Cut. 